welcome to the weekly current fair class today we will be dealing with topics from society ethics and as well as security our first topic will be moving away from population control you must have read the hindu article few days back with respect to the population control we will be seeing what was the author talking about and what was the main points of that article it will be uh, helpful for your gs paper 1 society part so coming back here what does this article state first of all it provide you provide you with some factual analysis it states that there has been a release of report that is called as a world population prospect report by the united nations this may this can also be helpful for your prelims exams आप उसमें भी यूज़ कर सकते हैं इस चीज़ को क्या पता यू पूछ भी ले तो आपको पता होना चाहिए आपके इंट्रोडक्शन वगैरह के लिए भी फैक्चुअल एनालिसिस है वो हमेशा हेल्पफुल रहता है इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट के लिए या आपके कोई रिपोर्ट है तो वो कंक्लूजन पार्ट के लिए काफ़ी हेल्पफुल रहती है तो ये क्या बता रहा है दैट यूनाइटेड नेशन पॉपुलेशन उसने क्या बताया दैट इंडिया विल बी द मोस्ट पॉपुलस कंट्री बाय ट्वेंटी और इंडिया विल रीच द फिगर ऑफ वन फिफ्टी by 2030 and 166 crores by 2050 this can also be substantiated with this uh, image that we have yahan pe dekhiye aapka surpassing ka point jo hai report ne mark kar rakha that here india will it is, it is projected to surpass china aur aapki yahan pe dekhiye 2050 hai to yahan pe population bhi jo hai 1.67 crores bata rakhi hai to इसको हम क्या ये रिपोर्ट सही रहेगी या ये रिपोर्ट गलत रहेगी दिस विल बी सीन व्हेन वी विल रिलीज द 2021 ट्वेंटी वन ऑब्वियसली द लेटेस्ट डाटा दैट वी हैव इज दैट इज फ्रॉम द 2011 थाउजेंड इलेवन व्हेन द सेंसिस विल बी कंप्लीट एंड इट्स डाटा विल बी पब्लिश्ड देन वी विल कम टू नो द एक्चुअल गवर्नमेंट फिगर्स ऑल्सो बट वॉट यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स हैज सॉरी यूनाइटेड नेशन हैज रिलीज इन इट्स रिपोर्ट इज दैट इंडिया विल बी रीचिंग द फिगर ऑफ वन फिफ्टी क्रोड्स वेयर इट विल बी सरपासिंग द Uh, china and by 2050 the figure will reach up to 166 crores aur ab hame iske isko link bhi karna padega obviously aap sabne society mein pad rakhi hogi the malthus theory demographic transition theory uske hisab se india is in the third stage of demographic transition okay and experiencing a slow growth rate due to the constantly aisa kyun hai aap logon ko pata hoga ki ye बेसिकली वो ऐसे चलता है और दिस इज अ पॉपुलेशन फिगर दिस इज अ हेल्थ इंडिकेटर्स एंड ऑल दैट ये आप लोगों को पता होगा दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेज ये आपकी सेकंड स्टेज है ये आपकी थर्ड स्टेज है ये आपकी फोर्थ स्टेज है डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज आर द पार्ट ऑफ द फोर्थ स्टेज ओके और जो आपकी नॉर्थ इंडिया जैसी कंट्रीज हैं दे आर बेसिकली द पार्ट ऑफ थर्ड स्टेज और यहाँ पे आप देख सकते हो कि बेसिकली जो पॉपुलेशन है इन चीज चीज की वजह से इट विल बी डिक्रीजिंग ग्रोथ होगी लेकिन उतनी नहीं है जितनी फर्स्ट स्टेज में है ओके okay, ऐसा क्यों है इसकी उसने रीजन भी प्रोवाइड कर रखे हैं बिकॉज ऑफ द लो मोर्टेलिटी रेट एंड रैपिडली डिक्लाइनिंग फर्टिलिटी ओके आप लोगों ने अगर न्यूज पेपर्स अच्छे से पढ़ रहे हो आप लोग करंट अफेयर्स अच्छे अच्छे से कवर कर रहे हो पहली बात तो आपको ये पता होगा कि जो आपका इंडिया का टोटल फर्टिलिटी रेट है कैपेसिटी ऑफ द वुमेन टू बियर children in her reproductive age that has been decreased to 2.1 okay and uske sath sath aapki health indicators bahut zyada improve ho chuke hain okay health facilities mein bahut zyada izafa hua hai to uski wajah se kya ho raha hai the mortality rates has been declining so that is why we are experiencing the third stage of demographic transition and further the reports states that india will house 17.5% of the world's पॉपुलेशन दोबारा से फैक्ट्स के गो थ्रू चलते हैं द वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन प्रोस्पेक्ट रिपोर्ट इट इज रिलीज बाय यूएन ओके एंड इट स्टेट्स दैट इंडिया विल बी द मोस्ट पॉपुलस कंट्री बाय 2023 एंड इन 2030 इंडिया विल बी रीचिंग द फिगर्स ऑफ 150 फिफ्टी क्रोड्स एंड बाय 2030 द फिगर विल बी 166 सिक्सटी दिस विल हाउस बेसिकली मेक इंडिया हाउस 17.5 percent of the world's population, and in the Malthus theory of demographic transition, we are in the third stage. 
वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग अ सो स्लो ग्रोथ रेट देयर इज अ पॉपुलेशन एक्सप्लोजन बट द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ हैज डिक्रीज वाई बिकॉज ऑफ लो मोर्टैलिटी एंड एज वेल एज द डिक्लाइनिंग फर्टिलिटी लेवल्स दिस आर द फैक्चुअल एनालिसिस दैट द आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट मूविंग फॉरवर्ड सो वॉट डज द आर्टिकल द मेन थीम ऑफ द आर्टिकल इज why we should not try to impose the population control you must have heard in the recent times the many approaches have been taken by the government in fact india was the first country to go for the population control first country to go for the specific national policy okay that stated that we should go for a population control over the period of time india has formulated various policies various targeted approaches to control the population growth and in recent time recently two to in recent 2 to 3 years you must have seen that the hype with respect to population control is very high many states have in fact went for the two child policy the author in this article states that that approach is not very effective and it is very difficult to implement this approach that what we we will be dealing with this point Okay so it states that I have already told you that India is the first country in the world to begin the population control program in 1952 okay over the period of time from 1950s to 60s then 70s then 1990s we have launched various approaches to control the population growth and more popular have been the you must have studied in your society classes clinical approach is there gandhian approach is there cafeteria approach is there many committees have been formulated in this regard we even go went for the national population policies in the 1970s okay but why these policies have not been able to control the population see the first mechanism is you will have to see that we are a democratic country okay which focuses upon the individual rights we want to go through the informed choices and the voluntary mechanisms this approach or these approaches were particularly criticized in the period of emergency okay you must have seen in the newspaper still now the approach is criticized when the kurshiv approach okay or involuntary approach was followed individuals were forcibly sterilized and total for it was the mechanism to reduce the total fertility rate okay the policy was very much criticized because it was coercive in nature and that is why that policy could not be effective it went through a period of one or two years but due to very high criticism or because of its involuntary nature the government had to abandon that policy so that is why due to these issues family planning has long lost its primacy in the indian policy discourse see another thing for family planning it requires this education and literacy you should have awareness with the respect to reproductive measures with respect to contraceptive techniques are there sterilization techniques are there okay how family planning also requires how much gap should be there between the two childs at what stage the woman should get pregnant so it as you can see that requires a lot of awareness on the part of the couples so that is that thing is also missing in indian society in fact today we are much more aware but if you talk about the 70s or 80s era the our population was majority of them was illiterate so that is why the awareness push could could also not be very effective on the part of the government government went through campaigns and ads but family planning as such you still today you will see that the sterilization techniques they carry a lot of taboo with respect to impot impotency issues okay still now we have not been able to come out of that stereotypes so this type of family planning type of thing it requires a lot of awareness on the part of the citizens and a lot of push from the part of the government also due to both the issues it has lost its push further moving forward see these approaches they were basically as i have already told you they were focused upon sterilizations how much number of sterilizations like they have been done condom distributions or your iud insertion is there to uh, reduce the basically pregnancy okay the approach was very much targeted or focused upon the quantitative issues the targets were given to the government officials that see we will the performance 
of your department will be measured upon how much sterilizations you have done how much basically uh, contraceptive uh, distributions your department has done so that approach was not very effective because it was more focused upon the distribution and less focused upon bringing the behavioral change and attitudinal change among people it the the targeted approach did not focus much upon creating awareness among people so that it can change their behavior so that is why family planning has lost its push further in 1994 india became a signatory to cairo conference on uh, population and development and it stated that in this approach it stated that in conference that we will go for voluntary and informed choice okay that we will not coerce our citizens anything with respect to coercive nature or involuntary involuntary choices will not be pushed from the government side in fact our focus will be to create the awareness among population so that they can themselves make a informed decision okay so that is why the author here talks about that why family planning already the mechanisms to introduce the concept of family planning or the government techniques government methodology to introduce the family planning has basically not bring the or brought out the desired fruits so that is why it should not be followed second thing he ta- the author talks about is that is the punitive measures see most recently as i have already told you that you must have seen in news newspapers the implementation of the two child policies by various uh, state governments at least 8 to 10 state governments have adopted this policy like assam is there or rajasthan is there gujarat is there many other all states are also following the suits so what this particular policy states that if an individual is having or is going for more than two childs that individual will be punished how he, that individual will be punished basically you cannot run for elections you cannot hold a you will not be an eligible for a government job you will not be eligible for government schemes you will not be eligible for another entitlement such as nutritional entitlements for pregnant women are there cash incentive schemes for pregnant women are there see the problem here is the with respect to these punitive policies which focus on punishing the individuals that if they cross a line particular barrier line then they will have to face the repercussions the author here again bases his arguments in that basically it is not an voluntary and informed choice mechanism further most of the individuals who are the beneficiaries of eligible schemes or who are going for nutritional entitlements for pregnant women they belong to the lower section of the society they will be belonging to the lower class or they will be belonging to the lower caste that individuals are already vulnerable and marginalized section in the society they are they are having low literacy rate they do not have very much awareness with respect to their rights with respect to their duties okay they are not very much aware of the government schemes so going for these kind of punitive measures will make them more marginalized and disadvantaged in the society whatever government welfare or the welfare schemes or they are eligible for or whatever social welfare they are getting from the schemes they will also become ineligible for that schemes so further you will see that the focus here in this particular policies rests upon the individuals okay it is it shift the focus from the government to the individual as such government should go for the awareness creation so that individuals can make an informed and voluntary choice but what is happening here is it shift the burden on on individual that if you go for a particular task you are eligible if you cross a line then you are becoming ineligible for the government schemes further as i have already stated that we are a democracy every citizen in india has access to fundamental rights okay you have access to human rights are there but going for these kind of schemes what happens is that you are sh- snatching away their basic fundamental rights their basic human rights to live within a democracy such as you cannot run for elections okay be- making eligible for the government ineligible for the government schemes it is a basically duty of the government to provide the welfare to the citizens who are already disadvantaged in the society further the author talks about the population regulation bill 2019 it also goes for the again punitive actions against people such as making them 
if you are going for more than two children then you will be devoid of all the government services so however again the author talks about this that the burden of disqualification and disincentive is invariably borne by the already marginalized like i have told you that already marginalized such as women is there okay poor individual is there disabled are there okay lower caste dalits are there okay these individuals are already belonging to the marginalized section of the society and shifting the burden on them to go for population control make them more marginalized like i have also highlighted here with respect to women that how they will become more mar dismarginalized in society uh, like government is already excluding them from the government schemes or running from the elections or the other nutritional requirements but the family structure will also go through change the individual who is having aspiration for such to fight the elections to stand in the panchayat elections are there or to stand in the municipal elections are there to fulfill that aspiration in rural areas specifically what is happening is that individuals are going for women abandonment they are abandoning their women okay there are in, there is increased rate of divorce so that basically we can we can be eligible to run for the election individuals are abandoning their children specifically and specifically if they are girl child okay we are already a patriarchal society where stereotype exists against the girl child so to fulfill these kind of aspirations the women section is already getting more marginalized already by the government and then in the family by the male folk of the family like going for the women abandonment is there divorce is there then abandoning the girl child is there further he states that at the global population summit held in nairobi in 2019 government has again reiterated that we will go for the voluntary and informed choice so the basic mechanic the thing here is that if you have already gone for the this uh, global population summit you have declared that we will be going for a voluntary and informed choice there is no reason to continue with the punitive action policies like two child policies are there or the population regulation bill 2019 is there which makes the individuals marginalized by disincentivizing them such as from uh, excluding them from the government schemes or other mechanisms that are there so this is the point the uh, individual uh, talks about moving forward to next point the next thing individual talks about is the aspirational revolution here the author talks about see we are not a country of 70s or 80s we are a now modern country okay we are in the advanced developing stage see what is happening is when we became independent and over the period of next 40 30 to 40 years agriculture was the dominant sector in our country so he is making a sense here that in agriculture you need more labor power to work on the fields and labor power in the basically market is expensive so what individuals were going for they were going for more number of children so that they can work in their farms and agricultural fields see but he states that we have gone through the change in the economic structure okay now we are uh, our 55% approximate uh, uh, contribution to gdp is by the service sector and there are more opportunities here okay education has uh, what we say gain a more prominence even the poor individual is there or the individual from the upper class irrespective of class class caste religion every individual wants that their children should get the best education so that they can be skilled and can get a more what we say affordable accessible and remunerative job so but that is what is stating is that that parents have began to rethink about the family building strategies because of the change in the economic structure our shift from agriculture to service sector okay so he states that smaller families are investing more in their children by sending them to private schools coaching classes you must have observed within your surroundings within your family relatives anywhere that individuals are going for less number of children so that they can provide the all best facilities best schooling best health facilities to the children okay so if less number of children will be there the more uh, the resources can be more adequately devoted to that children and nobody will be left behind sitting at home like it used to happen in the earlier times 
so what he states that that it is not the aspiration for the parents themselves but to make secure the future of their children that they are going for the fertility decline levels okay it is very hard to raise the children in today's time because of the inflation because of the economic uncertainties and all that so he states that basically the individuals are themselves going for the fertility decline so that the resources that they have they can be more adequately devoted to their only child or the basically two child at max so further he states that what we need to do here is government basically does not have to go for the uh, punitive measures or the population control bill thing like this what you have to do is you have to ensure that the health and the family welfare system that is there is up to the challenge okay what we are seeing, seeing a shift in this population structure we are able to provide for contraceptive because desire is on the part of individuals if individuals are want to go for the fertility decline obviously there should be availability of the associated health reproductive system in the market so that they have access to contraceptives sexual and reproductive health services that allow basically individuals to have only as many as children as they want like contraceptives are there sterilization techniques are there condoms are there they should be easily accessible available and further the taboo associated with the with respect to use of these techniques should be removed so that why child individuals can have only as much children as they want further he states that again what i have already told you that per capita income what are you earning in today's time what are the healthcare facilities available what are the other basic basic necessities available in a particular area in a particular state or a country where you live are the more important considerations with respect to how much number of children you will be having if you the individual is very influential having a very high per capita income he or she may basically the couple may decide that we will have more number of children because they can afford the resources they can provide all the facilities to their children okay similarly with respect to healthcare is there okay so these kind of things become the important contributors the basic premise here is that there is a drive on the part of individuals themselves to go for the lower fertility levels but what the government should go for is instead of punitive measures like we have seen forward government should go on providing the reproductive health services so that individuals can make a again voluntary and informed choice moving forward to next our next point what does basically another thing he the author highlights is with respect to development and poverty development here we will be seeing as a human development a multi dimensional concept social economic political and human development where all things are counted in so he states that total fertility rate in india i have already explained you the capacity of a woman to bear the number of children in her reproductive age it has declined to 2.2 in 2017 okay it he provides the factual data to substantiate his claim he states that seven states have recorded higher total fertility rates that are higher than the national average of 2.2 for example there are uttar pradesh is there then bihar is there madhya pradesh is there rajasthan is there assam is there and chatisgarh and jharkhand is there the seven states which are having the higher total fertility rates than the national average of 2.2 he states that basically these seven states account for 45% of our total population in the 2011 census so how does he link this with development he states that the individuals basically you will see that for example bihar is there it is having a highest total fertility rate of 3.2 he is he states that you will see the maximum percentage of illiterate women at 26.8% in bihar which is having a total high fertility rate and literacy rate among women is 90.3% in kerala so what does the basic thing the what does this fact or data state that is if the level of development in a particular state is high 
इट इज़ हैविंग हाई लिटरेसी रेट्स बेसिक फैसिलिटीज आर प्रोवाइडेड टू ऑल द पीपल ओके द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इज़ वेल इन प्लेस यू विल सी दैट द स्टेट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ही टेक्स द सोशल इंडिकेटर ऑफ लिटरेसी हेयर द स्टेट्स विच आर हैविंग हाई लिटरेसी रेट्स आर हैविंग लो फर्टिलिटी रेट्स वेयर एज द स्टेट्स विच आर हैविंग वॉट वी से लो लिटरेसी रेट और आर मोर देर आर द नंबर ऑफ पीपल इलिटरेट आर मोर दे आर हैविंग द हाई फर्टिलिटी रेट और इन सिंपलर टर्म्स दे आर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग मोर टू द टोटल पॉपुलेशन लाइक ही स्टेट्स दे आर दैट दी सेवन स्टेट्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल पॉपुलेशन इन टू थाउजेंड अलेवन सेंसर दैन ही फर्दर मेक्स इज पॉइंट्स दैट इफ यू विल सी दैट रेलेटिवली वेल ऑफ स्टेट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल हु आर हैविंग मोर इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट ओके हु आर मोर शिफ्टेड टूवर्ड्स द सर्विस सेक्टर ओके वेयर मोर इकोनॉमिक अपॉर्चुनिटीज आर देयर ऑब्वियसली वॉट विल हैपन इज द सोशल इंडिकेटर्स हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन इंडिकेटर्स विल ऑल्सो इंप्रूव यू विल सी दैट दे आर डेमोस्ट्रेटिंग फर्टिलिटी रेट्स दैट आर लोअर दैन द नेशनल एवरेज नेशनल एवरेज रेट इज टू पॉइंट टू फॉर एग्जाम्पल केरला इज हैविंग वन पॉइंट सेवन दैन तमिलनाडु इज हैविंग वन पॉइंट सिक्स तेलंगाना इज हैविंग वन पॉइंट सेवन यू विल सी दैट देयर टी एफ आर रेट्स आर बिलो वॉट आर इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर पॉपुलेशन रिप्लेसमेंट सो हाउ डज ही बेसिकली लिंक फर्टिलिटी एंड डेवलपमेंट इज इन नटशल द स्टेट्स विच आर मोर इकनॉमिकली वेल ऑफ विच आर हैविंग मोर बेटर सोशल इंडिकेटर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लिटरेसी एजुकेशन हेल्थ फैसिलिटीज आर देयर यू विल सी दैट द टोटल फर्टिलिटी रेट्स और देयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द टोटल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द कंट्री विल बी लेस वेयर आर द स्टेट्स हु आर लैगिंग बिहाइंड ऑन इकनॉमिक एंड सोशल इंडिकेटर्स एजुकेशन हेल्थ इकनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट एंड ऑल यू विल बी सींग दैट दे आर हैविंग द टोटल फर्टिलिटी रेट अबव द नेशनल एवरेज and in simpler terms so they are contributing more to the total population of the country so what he the thing he wants to say here is that instead of going for punitive measures like excluding people from the schemes like earlier stated you should go for the development if government will provide the development then individual will dev- themselves because of the increase in literacy economic parameters and education levels individuals will themselves go for the decrease in the fertility level so what is required is in respect uh, in uh, what we say development in spite of uh, going for the punitive measures so this is basically what is all that was there with respect to the moving away from the population control article okay so we will move on next to the our what we say ethics part just give me a second so you must have seen also this news in the indian express explained page basically article was there with respect to the genomic surveillance okay so i will state basically but we will be it is a topic of uh, it can also be asked in the science and tech but can also be asked with the, uh, respect to the ethical point of view okay we what we will be dealing here is with the ethical perspective here so first of all what is genomic surveillance see genomic surveillance is the process of constantly monitoring pathogens and analyzing their genetic similarities and differences so what this basic definition wants to state is that you can track the evolution spread and outbreak of pathogens so that they do not become into the global pandemic like we have seen in the case of infectious diseases like covid which was associated with bats and then there is a rise of monkey pox now so genomic surveillance is constantly monitoring the pathogens which can lead to what we say global pandemics like covid and monkey pox so the recent article that basically came here and various government uh, bodies as well as the international bodies has argued for going for the genomic surveillance so that basically public health con- what we say emergency can be contained but what has happened is that various expert bodies have raised the ethical concerns regarding genomic surveillance with respect to how with respect to the uh, relationship between animals and individuals how you will be treating individuals that is a main part of our article also here or that we will be discussing here ethical concerns how ethical concerns will be raised with respect to relationship between individuals and animals 
moving forward to ethical issues see our first ethical issue is with respect to the implications for the privacy and autonomy what basically what is the ethical issue here see for example i have given also the example so that it will make the things easier for you to understand to going understand the process of sars cov2 the surveillance was done okay that how it can spread or how what other forms the pathogens can take the analysis was done through the waste water for the presence of virus virus no doubt it offered of the opportunity to detect the virus that where it can spread but what the ethical issue is there that from where the particular place for example take we will explain the point with this example only for example you have to go for the water waste water analysis obviously you will be taking the samples from a particular place so the issue is that the people who are living in those surroundings or those who will be participating in this such screening mechanism whether they are particularly informed about what they are going through what the analysis will be how the findings for example it goes through that it states that sars cov2 is present in that particular waste water okay what will be the consequences of that how they will be impacted okay what, whether with respect to for example 10 subjects are there for with respect to 10 individuals the public uh, findings have been made public okay or conclusions have been drawn on those particular 10 individuals their privacy and autonomy will be hampered why because the all the information with respect to those particular individuals will be placed in the public domain everybody will be able to access it so they may be despised by the society they may be stigmatized by the society even more over the whole of the area may be stigmatized because there is always a rumors start that is how rumors start that in that particular area the virus has started okay the from that particular area the infection is spreading and the individuals living in vicinity to that particular area what happens with respect to is they get stigmatized okay they get despised by the society and when the government teams or the ngos or other research teams go there to find the analysis to do to the analysis more or less what happens is the individuals are not well informed about the screenings and their inclusion in the tests and all the findings with respect to those individuals are put in the public domain and the because the information has been made public their privacy and autonomy is hampered see this is our first ethical issue that is with respect to privacy and autonomy second ethical issue is basically the challenges that are associated with the enhanced ability to track the diseases see the problem here is with respect to the historical association of infectious disease outbreaks with xenophobia for example take the case with respect to the diseases like malaria is dengue is there dysentery is there these diseases are linked to the particular geographical areas for example africa is there or for example out of asia is there whenever you will go to a developed country okay you will see that if you will take the name of these diseases they will state that they spring out of africa they spring out of asia that was also what was witnessed in the covid 2 if you specifically remember that for example how china was stigmatized okay how particular variant with respect to india was named and india was getting stigmatized then africa was also stigmatized people from other countries develop xenophobia with respect to the individuals of that particular country okay they are excluded they are stigmatized in the outside countries okay why because of the association of the disease with the particular country you can quote the example of here that basically how china is today also despised for the outbreak of the covid okay because that is from where the covid emerged and all over the world basically people started stigmatizing chinese people okay further earlier restrictions before it became a global pandemic the restrictions were placed on the chinese individuals only their movement was restricted they were not allowed to board the planes they were not allowed to enter the countries so this can happen with anybody 
for example i have again given another example here is that is with respect to the out of africa diseases there or out of asia diseases there delta variant with respect to uh, countries like india you can quote that example as well that how after their rise basically the developed ind individuals in the developed countries were associating that particular disease or particular variants with respect to the particular country and individuals from that country they were the have they had to face the xenophobia they had to face racism they were excluded from participating in the public gatherings that is the another issue basic thing is the association of a particular disease with the particular country and in fact the naming of the variant or the disease with respect to the that area only for example ebola virus is there it is named after the river in africa and obviously the people living in vicinity to those river they were despised okay you can take out many other examples so this historical association with the rise of a particular disease and the geographical space it affects the community it affects the people of that particular country because they are excluded from the normal participation in the public society and they have what they have to face normally is oppression exclusion and discrimination that you can quote here with respect to china also with respect to covid 19 okay because you can state that in your example that before it became a global pandemic it was the chinese people that were basically excluded from boarding the planes or allowed into the what we say entry in the country and when it became a global pandemic the basically the chinese people they were discriminated against okay because the it uh, disease uh, what we say emerged out of china so this is our second ethical issue first one was with respect to privacy and autonomy of the individual on, on whom the study is done second is with respect to the association of a disease with a particular geographical area moving forward to our next basically issue see despise we have what the point states here is that despise the development of the global disease surveillance system okay and zoonotic disease and influenza inequalities are reflected in the distribution and availability of the tools you must have again i will like to quote the example you can also quote it from covid remember the case of vaccine distribution how what inequality was there between the global north and the global south still till date basically there are many african countries which have not received a single dose of vaccines because all the vaccines that were there they were basically developed in the global north and you can basically also quote how in who india lobbied for the equitable distribution of the vaccines okay and it was opposed by all the countries including the us even the bill gates went on to state that basically the development of the all the vaccines will be dev, done in the developed countries okay the distribution of the solution or the distribution of the basically what we say tools and mechanism to con what we say prevent the disease it is they, it is having an equal inequitable distribution how because it most of the focus is always on the global north okay and even with respect to the diseases that have not emerged okay the f f problems that we have not faced what we are seeing is there is an over representation of viral genomes from the global north the focus is more on to tackle the diseases that are prevalent in the developed countries rather what can emerge in the global south or what can emerge in the low developed countries or the third world countries basically so this is issue with respect to the inequitable you have to remember two things in this first is with respect to inequitable distribution of tools and mechanisms to prevent a particular disease you can quote the example of covid uh, here you can quote the example of how india lobbied in basically who along with other developed countries developing countries for the equitable distribution of vaccines and how till date africa has there are many african countries which have not received the covid-19 vaccines because all the production and distribution and supply chain demand is basically focused on the global north or the developed countries second thing to remember is that there is less issue with uh, there is sorry less focus on the emerging diseases or the emerging infectious problems that can emerge in 
low uh, less developing or the third world countries there is an over representation of the diseases from the global north okay that is basically the another issue and again next issue is with respect to face off between the individual privacy and the public health i have quoted example here also see in covid 19 there was a individual named patient 13 who was thought to be a center of large cluster of infections at a church in south korea basically okay what happened at the end was it had consequences for the privacy of individuals and details were publicly released when she refused to part cooperate or participate with the contact tracing you must have seen with respect to covid 19 that many individuals in in india also for example somebody who was traveling from a foreign country he or she was infected how media trial was done with respect to that individual that or particular group who was going for a social gathering they were despised by the society that they are the carriers of the viral infections and they are infecting other individuals their details by the media were leaked online with respect to this is a particular individual he is or she is living in that particular area he or she is belonging to that particular religion okay and because the leaks were done and the information became public okay the all the basic information or the private information it went into the public domain individuals were despised they were stigmatized by the society even by the government agencies they were excluded from the government gathering restrictions were placed upon their movement okay and when because of all the media trial and glare basically that was happening when they refused to participate in the contact tracing you must have seen there was news in the covid 19 that many individuals from public hospitals fled because they refused to participate in the contact tracing why that happened was it was highlighted that media went for the trial there blaming them for the basically what we say Uh, carrying the viral infections and infecting the other people there and their uh, names and all the uh, what we say residential details were made public by the media and they particular individuals basically they fled from the government hospital to avoid the what we say social stigmatization or discrimination or exclusion by the society towards them so this is a, another issue that is a basically face off between the public individual privacy and the public health how this should be tackled the last point is that basically if an, any individual is carrying a viral infection or he or she is a carrier proper screening should be done okay he or she can be put into an isolation or the quarantine facilities and it should be ensured that media trial should not be done his or her name should not be basically revealed to the public so that he or she does not become a victim of the social stigma particularly with respect to you uh, another example i want to quote here is for example when covid was in the earlier stages in india okay it not had spread to the whole of the country the individuals who were the early infection who were the early infectants okay you must remember how they were despised by the society how they were discriminated or excluded from the public gatherings okay so that type of issues basically need to be avoided if any individual is a carrier even in the early stages it has not become a pandemic he or she should be properly quarantined okay the public or the private details should not be made public and he or she should be ensured that basically there his public health details will not be made basically into the private or the public domain sorry this was all with respect to the ethical issues again i want to repeat in nutshell first issue is with respect to the public uh, individual uh, privacy and autonomy with respect to participation in the screening of tests and the public of the conclusions made about made about the particular disease second is with respect to the inequalities you have seen here third is with respect to the individual pri- face off between the individual privacy and the public health and the most important one the association between a particular disease and the geographical area and how the people living in the vicinity of that particular geographical area they are excluded discriminated and oppressed in the society so these are the ethical issues with respect to genome sequencing moving on to now the security part 
what this is uh, what we say relevant for your prelims exam you must have read in the newspaper that india us exercise is going on basically the name of exercise is vijay prahar it is taking place in himachal pradesh baklo area it is a 13th edition and it is a annual exercise the upsc can ask you the name of the particular exercise and ask to which country it is related okay or if it wants to go to the difficult level it can ask the place where it is taking place or what edition it is or whether it is a annual or a biannual exercise okay that is all what you need to remember the name is vijay prahar taking place in himachal pradesh baklo and then 13th edition and it is a annual exercise so these are all the basically weekly topics that were relevant for the society ethics and the security part this will be all from my side thank you and all the best for your future endeavors